Albumin is a transport protein synthesized by the liver. Normal ranges are 3.5 to 6 grams per deciliter. What transport protein means essentially is that it helps to move smaller molecules through the blood. It also plays a very essential role in fluid balance. Okay, So it helps move smaller molecules through the blood, including things like bilirubin, calcium, uh, progesterone, and different medications. And then it plays a very key role in regulating uh, fluid within the blood and leak and, and it keeps fluids from leaking into the tissues and this is what we refer to as colloid oncotic pressure or osmotic pressure Pro- albumin is a very large protein synthesized by the liver helps carry things through the blood and then it plays a key role in keeping fluids within the blood right because uh, we know uh, that osmotic pressure what osmotic pressure essentially does fluids will move from an area of lower concentration of solute to an area of higher concentration of solute. So albumin is is one of these solutes that's within the blood that helps to keep fluids in there, okay? So it plays a very key role in that in keeping fluids within the blood and then transporting different things throughout the blood. It's it's run very often as part of the CMP or comprehensive metabolic panel. If a patient's in the hospital, this will be a test that they receive possibly daily or even more. So we, we assess it very often. What it helps us to do is it helps us to evaluate liver function, uh, nutritional status, and the patient's overall health status. We can also evaluate kidney function with this. So a physician will generally run this, this test maybe daily, like I said, every couple days or multiple times a day as part of a CMP, or they can decide to run it when there are signs and symptoms of liver disorder, such as jaundice, fatigue, weight loss. Uh, and if we see symptoms of like nephrotic syndrome, and this would be issues like swelling, uh, excessive edema, especially around the eyes, belly, and legs. Now, albumin can also be used along with prealbumin to help evaluate nutritional status in a patient. So because albumin concentrations respond to many, many conditions, uh, as well as malnutrition, it's important to really evaluate decreased levels of albumin. Some things that would cause low albumin would be things like liver disease. Uh, Typically in patients who have cirrhosis, albumin is typically lower. And so if we have liver disease, liver dysfunction, you know, the liver won't be producing this protein and then we might see lower levels. It can also be seen in symptoms uh, or in situations like inflammation, shock, like we said, malnutrition, and it can reflect uh, diseases within the kidneys. So we can run serum albumin. We can also run urine albumin. What can happen in cases where the kidneys can't stop albumin from leaking uh, into from the blood into the urine and being lost, uh, you know, the kidneys aren't able to retain this albumin due to to malfunction within the kidneys, then we could run a ser- or a urine albumin and we might see higher levels of albumin within the urine that it's getting out. Sometimes that we might see higher uh, albumin would be issues like dehydration. So albumin, what can really help you to understand albumin is as you start to understand really that it's produced by the liver, it's an essential protein in transportation and fluid balance. And as you start to really dive into osmosis, osmotic pressure, and how albumin plays a role in fluid balance within the body, you really start to understand how we can use this to evaluate overall health status of a patient. And just understanding how it's produced and where it comes from can really help you understand how it can help us evaluate liver function. So again, this is albumin. Normal range is 3.5 to 6, uh, and it's very essential to liver function, kidney function, nutritional status, inflammation, and fluid balance.